Hello there, welcome to another art haul video where I have got art materials from Hannah Muller, Jackson's and also Baker Ross. There will be a selection of sketchbooks and also acrylic gouache. We're going to be swatching them, seeing how they behave and also at the end I'm going to be testing out three different sketchbooks. So hang around for that one. Hi, I'm Omar. I'm an artist, illustrator and author. I help artists improve their skills by sharing my knowledge from filling 50 sketchbooks. First of all, let's open this Hannah Muller box. And it's a whole load of sketchbooks. Um, I do love this cotton one. Uh, it's the A4 version. And we've got some other cotton sketchbooks. This is the A5 version by Hannah Muller. And I love these little ones. This is um, not cotton, but it's still cold pressed. Oh, and these, these are for my little retreat guests. I'll probably give these away, um, maybe Spain, I think. <laughs> oh, and some more postcards. I don't know if you saw on Instagram, I did um, some Christmas postcards and also some sunsets and these are fantastic. Now these are new. I have tried the bamboo version and Hannah Muller have started doing the sugarcane watercolour version. So I'm really eager to test this out. So I've got the A4 version and also the A5 version. I thought both of these would be really great for my next uh, workshop. It's um, for landscapes. Let's see what we've got in here. Oh, we've got several little packages. A uh, whole bun acrylic gouache. Never seen little boxes like this before. Let's have a look. We have lemon yellow, opera, and also horizon blue. They do look rather bright, but I have got plans for these. Let's open this version of more Holbein acrylic gouache. And we have got leaf green, yellow ochre, and coral red. Oh, I can't wait to try those out. I know they look really, really bright, but I'm hoping they will serve a purpose for my sketchbook studies. I honestly can't remember what is supposed to be in here. Ah, Karen Dash. Righty ho. So these are neo colours. Now, which ones did I get? I have got um, ruby red, jade green. Oh, I say, that looks rather gorgeous, doesn't it? And also uh, dark green. I've got a feeling I've already ordered that one. And Prussian blue. And these are quill brushes. Uh, I'm going to give these out to my retreat guests in... Vietnam. Now this last package is from a company called Baker Ross and let's open it up. We have paint sticks, pastel paint sticks. This is something that I have been looking for for quite a while. If you've seen my other video, you know that I've just started using paint sticks, but they work rather bright. So I'm hoping these might be a little bit less vibrant. And I thought these would be really great to give out at my Vietnam retreat. These were discounted. I think there's got a seasonal offer on at the moment. So I've got a whole stack of them that I can give out to my retreat guests. I've got my normal Dala Rowney cartridge paper that you've seen me do other test for art halls before. So let's find a new page. Or oh, maybe not that one. And I think first off, I would like to try out these Baker Ross paint sticks. They are, it says pastel paint and um, not suitable for children under 36 months, small parts and colours may stain hands and suitable clothing should be worn at all times. <laughs> Let's give these a go. 
These are very similar to the other paint sticks that I tried out a little while ago. I'll link to that video in the description. It looks like a giant fat lipstick. So this is the, the pastel green. It doesn't have anything. Oh, oh, I say. I think we need to see a close up of this. It is very, very creamy. Oh, that's pretty gorgeous. And I want to put blue next to it and then overlap it and they will dry I think pretty quickly so you can layer them on but something that I'm testing out is because they're meant for kids and they're probably water soluble so even when they're dry I think you could probably reactivate them like that and that's something that I've just kind of um, worked out recently let's try the other colors got this kind of peachy one here that's jolly nice and this is a, oh, that is a lovely color. It's so smooth. It's so smooth and creamy. It's like buttercup. Oh, that's nice as well. It is literally like having a giant lipstick in your hand. Okay, now let's add a little bit of water to these because I think this will give sort of an extra dimension should we need it look at that isn't that interesting it doesn't completely sort of um dissolve but it could add extra sort of effects let's see what happens if i put a line over that oh now that is interesting isn't it and maybe this one wow that could be very, very useful indeed. Let's see if, what happens if I put it over damp areas. It kind of melts into it. Wow. Just want to emphasize again, these paint sticks are made for children. They are not necessarily an art material. So they probably aren't gonna be light fast. That's something um, that people have asked me about paint sticks. So they're not like from Faber-Castell. I'm not sure how long they would actually last. Now let's try the Caran d'Ache Neo Colors. First off is this Prussian blue. Let's press down quite hard and do that and see what happens when we activate it with water. Oh, I say, isn't that a gorgeous colour? Okay, and what happens if I work back into it again? Oh, that's jolly nice, isn't it? That's nice. So that's the Prussian blue. This one is Jade. Oh, I say, look at that green. It's, it's a lovely, lovely pale turquoise almost. Oh, that's gonna be gorgeous. I can see myself using that in Vietnam, I reckon. What happens if I work that into there? Now that could be interesting as well. Oh, look at that color. Okay, now we've got this one, which is dark green. I think I do have quite a few green Neo colors, but I'll have to check, double check that I haven't already got this. Oh, look at that when you put a bit of water on it. That's a bit gorgeous. What happens if I mix these two together? That's gonna be very interesting to see what happens when I take these out to Vietnam. Now this last one is ruby red. So let's do a little section here. That is a lovely raspberry color. Hold on. Oh, really lovely. Very vibrant. mix those together now that's could be a lovely combination couldn't it 
If you're enjoying this, then please consider leaving me a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content such as this. These acrylic gouache from Holbein, I wanted to apply in my sketchbooks. Um, I do like to make textured backgrounds. I'm going to link to the video where I show you how to do that using inks. However, because I want to be taking these out to retreats, I don't want to be traveling with ink. And I realized that acrylic gouache would probably act fairly similar. So let's try these out. Just going to squeeze a little bit out because I'm not really going to be using like normal gouache. I want to really water it down and create textures like that. That's beautiful blue. And this one is coral red. Oops, <laughs> that's probably enough. Let's just spread that out a bit. Oh, can you see how it does that? That's the kind of effect I'm trying to create. And the wonderful thing is these acrylic gouache will not reactivate. Once they're dry, they, they won't shift. And that is what I want for my sketchbooks. And I'm gonna show you how I create some of that in just a moment. <gasps> Look at that, leaf green, I say. Well, wow, that's a bit outrageous, isn't it? Got room for a little bit of lemon yellow down here. Oh, I say that is pretty luminous. I think I'm going to have to um, combine some of these colors just to mute them. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know it was going to do that, but that's good to understand how it could work with a bit of neo color and now a bit of opera. Oh my giddy art. Holy moly, how flipping luminous is that? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> um, run out of room here. Um, bit of yellow ochre. Just pop a bit there. Now, I think this is going to work perfectly for my needs. At the moment, I am taking out this toned paper sketchbook from Hannah Muller. I started this a little while ago and then forgot about it and then um, I took it out to France with me and I do little sketches like this. This was actually um, uh, in Norfolk a few weeks ago. It's nice enough for toned paper studies like this. However, I just find it a little bit too dull for my liking. So I just want to jazz up a few of the pages. Um, let's just you know, get some of this in here because I do want to take this out with me to Vietnam. And I, I just think um, it, Vietnam is probably gonna be a little bit more colorful. And I just want to add some of that um, energy. Um, if you've seen my other video, you'll know that I, I tend to just do, you know, any anything like this in my sketchbook. And I just turn over the page and hope that um, whatever I'm going to paint next, um, it just fits into this sort of color scheme. Why well, I make it fit into this color scheme. And I think we need a little bit more pink. Hold on, get some of that in there. And where's that green? I think um, one of the plate. Oh, oh, whoops a daisy. Oh, I've done a big boo boo there sugar right i've got this issue here where i'm going to have to use up that gouache so i'm going to open up this uh sketchbook hannah muller it's just their basic uh watercolor sketchbook the a6 one so i'm going to have to apply some of that opera rose in this one as well i don't really want to be wasting this paint so let's just apply some of that i might have to get a bigger brush or oh, actually i might just use my fingers Pop some of that in there. Oh, that's a bit too much. Oh, that could be interesting though. And just turn over the page. Let's 
and hopefully this is going to be good backdrop for my Vietnam sketches. Gosh. Uh, the secret when you do textured background like this is not to over apply. Don't don't apply it thickly. It could it should be quite a a light value. This whole sketchbook is just going to be opera rose, isn't it? This is what that original test sheet looks like now. I have just gone to town filling up my sketchbook because of this accident with the, um, the rose acrylic gouache. And so I wasn't intending to do this for this video, but um, you can now see how I have filled up uh, my toned sketchbook. It's just very random marks. And also I want to show you the, the little Hannah Muller one. Again, I've just filled it using, oh, look, look at the state of my hand. I've used my brush and I've used um, the, the heel of my hand just to fill it up like this and once it's dry it will not reactivate so I didn't want to take ink to um, Vietnam and, and perhaps later on in Spain I, I didn't want to risk it so um, I prefer I think it would be safer to take out tubes like this inside uh, a plastic bag and get the students participants to create their own textured backgrounds like this oh Oh, I say, that was unexpected. So there's quite a lot there for me to be getting on with once I get out to my retreat. Now I want to try out the different Hanumuda sketchbooks and also this sugarcane watercolour paper. This is their 100% cotton watercolour book. It's 250 GSM. It's A5 size, 60 pages. This is their watercolour book, cold pressed, 200 GSM. And this is a new one, sugarcane watercolour, and uh, it's 290 GSM. And uh, it is a natural white paper with cold press, clearly defined surface texture, suitable for all kinds of watercolour techniques. So let's give this a go. Um, and instead of opening this one up, um, I've got this one that I had all my um, acrylic gouache in. So I'm just going to uh, try it out on this last page. One last thing to mention are these quill brushes from Bajaxa's Art. And I only like to give these out at workshops or people can borrow them at my in-person workshops, but I'm gonna give these away to my retreat participants because they see me use, using it to get certain effects and um, I don't want them to miss out. So um, that's just an extra treat for them. This is my own very small quill brush from Jaxa's Art. I'm just going to use a bit of purple here just to see how they react to these different papers. This one here is the 100% cotton. And this one is the sugarcane paper. And this one is the board colour book. At the moment, there's not much difference, but I'd say what happened is if I were to add another pigment, say the um, opera rose. And really, we need to wait for these to dry. This first one is the 100% cotton, and this one is the sugar cane. And this one is the cellulose watercolour paper. And if I'm being honest, I can't see a massive difference, but these are only very small swatches and they are not behaving as I would normally use my watercolours, which is a, a lot more wet on wet. And in terms of the pigment, I do think that um, the sugar cane and this 100% cotton, um, they just seem to be a little bit more vibrant. And I'm just gonna wait and see what happens when I use it in the real world. 
I do have a video about the watercolour brushes that I've used in the past and I just wanted to show you the equivalent um, of a quill which is probably a number 10 round. Uh, this is the Winsor & Newton and let's just pop this in here and see what happens. Um, all right, let's try and pick up a little bit more pigment. Uh, I work in a certain way, which is called a, a juicy brush. The pigment is fully loaded. I'm gonna show you what that is. Um, you can see it's glistening and you've tried to fill up the, the bristles with as much pigment as you can. So that's the round version. And this is gonna be the quill version. It's, it's probably a teeny weeny bit smaller but um, I just think it holds so much more pigment and it is a little bit smaller, but um, it's a personal choice. I'm not saying one's better than the other and it's up to you what you prefer. These lovely little zigzag books, which um, are five by five and they fold out like that. I'm not gonna open this because they're gonna be presents for retreat participants. It's gonna be the same type of paper as this and um, I think it's really great quality. I would love to know what you take on location or when you go on holiday with your sketchbook. What do you have in your art kit? And do you want to see a video where I show you what is in my kit? I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe for more content such as this. Until next time, stay amazing.